What's up, YouTube? Today we're going to be testing the two best shoe protectors I could find on Amazon. Uh, the Kiwi Select, which I've already made a video about, and this has turned out to be an excellent shoe protector. And we're going to be pitting it against the Force Field Protector, which I also found on Amazon. The Kiwi Selector costs, I think, $10.99 for a 7.7 .7 ounce bottle. And the Force Field was about $15 for a 6 ounce bottle. Now, how we're going to do the test? What we're going to do, we're going to spray the left shoe with the Force Field. We're going to spray the Kiwi Select on the right shoe. And what we're going to do is take that big pitcher in the back. We're going to fill it up to 48 ounces. And we're going to just keep pouring it on the shoes until the protector wears off. And we're going to measure how many pitchers the shoes could take before the shoe protectant wears off. All right, now let's look at the directions for the force field. It says start with dry, clean surface. Shake can well and spray in thin, even coats, five inches from surface. Be careful not to saturate surface. Allow to dry and repeat for added protection. Now the interesting thing about this thing, it doesn't tell you how long to wait between each coat. So I, what I'm going to do to make things fair, I'm going to wait an hour because that's what the Kiwi Select recommends. And now let's look at the Kiwi Select. All right, directions. Try in an inconspicuous area first. Article should be clean and dry. Hold can upright six to eight inches from an article and spray evenly all over. Two, using a well-ventilated area away from heat and flame. I recommend doing it outside. Three, allow to dry one hour at room temperature. Four, a second application is recommended on new articles. Five, repeated applications continue to improve repellency. Now what we're going to do, we're going to do two coats for each shoe. And then we're going to let them dry for 24 hours. And then after that, we're going to pour our water all over them to see how long they last. To test this mesh part here, we're going to stick a paper towel on the inside to see if water gets through. All right, everybody, we're about to apply the Kiwi. I went on ahead and decided to use the Kiwi on the left shoe because it has a little bit of dirt right up here on the toe box. I cleaned it all the, a little bit, but I want to make sure we give the force shield a fair shot. We already know how the Kiwi performs. So let's get into it. Coat number one. All right, so the force shield has a pretty cool design when you want to open it up. So you just take this little piece right here and you slide it over and now it's open and ready to spray. All right, everybody, it's been an hour, so we're about to apply the second coat of both the Kiwi and the Force Shield. So I'm about to do the Kiwi first. All right, now we're going to apply the second coat of the force field. One thing I noticed is that the force field actually lingers longer on the concrete than the kiwi. The kiwi dries a lot faster. Not really sure if that'll make a difference as far as the waterproofing goes, but we'll see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this road on the show. And we're going to pour a pitcher of 48 ounce water on this shoe until the water barrier breaks. And this is the force field.
Oh, no. Now, after the first pour, after the first pour, we see the napkin that I had on the inside of the shoe is soaking wet. So, the force field didn't do anything for preventing water to penetrate through this mesh on the toe box, which I really didn't expect it to. But if we look on the toe box here, it is still some water. Actually, this is very wet. This is wet. Well, that's it. All right, so that was actually way quicker than I anticipated. The force field has failed. It only took about one and a half pitcher. This is actually very wet. And you can even see it here on this gray part. It's penetrated that and it's a darker color. So force field, it took one and a half pitcher. Let's move on to the Kiwi. Now, just like the force field, I'm going to take a napkin and I'm going to stuff it inside of here. I don't, again, I don't think that it's going to protect the inside of the shoe from getting wet because this is just basically holes. I don't think it's anything you can spray on here to prevent that from getting, to prevent water from penetrating that. But we're going to focus on the suede here and pretty much once it stops beating and rolling off, we'll know that it penetrated it. So let's go. Got the first 48 ounces. Now, just like I thought, the inside of the insole got wet. You see the napkin is wet. It's not as soaked as the other one, but that was mainly because I concentrated the pores here on the tip of the shoe. And this couldn't handle, I mean, this handled maybe three-fourths of the, of the picture. So, yeah, the force field actually comes out on top. All right, just to double-check my findings, I'm going to do the back of the shoe, too. All right, point it on the back now, just to double check my findings. And this is the force field. All right, so we'll just kind of cut out, but this is wet already. And it only took about half of the picture. So we're going to try the rear part of the Kiwi spray shoe. Oh, you know what? Actually, this is not wet. This is dry. Okay, after com after coming back to the Kiwi spray shoe, it's only been a couple minutes. The toe box is actually still dry. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that test first, and then I'll go back and do the rear part. Okay, yeah, that's definitely wet now. You can even see it darkening right there. All right, so... I got down to 35 ounces on this one, so let's go ahead and do the rear now. Looking at the rear of the shoe, it's not wet yet. You can actually see some parts where I uh, where some water penetrated on the heel. I didn't really spray that part when I was doing a waterproof. And so we're gonna do another picture on the rear of the Kiwi Spray shoe. All right, second picture on the back of the Kiwi Spray shoe. All right, as you can see on the rear of the shoe, It started to get a little bit dark, so it started to penetrate just a tad, but I'm going to go ahead and do a third picture just to see if we can really get it wet. It 
it's a little bit wet, but still not much more than it just was. I'm gonna go ahead and do one more picture just to see if we can really get this thing soaked. All right, four pictures in, and we're still just a little bit wet. I'm going to go ahead and call it quits. All right, so as you guys can see here, I'm using the other shoe. So this shoe has the force field on it, and I went through six pictures, and I could not get that thing wet. Uh, it, it, well, it did basically what the Kiwi did. It was just kind of a little bit wet after six pictures, and I just stopped. Um, so this test is pretty inconsistent. I mean, neither one of them seem to hold up that well on the toe box, but on the back of the shoe, I mean, goodness, it almost seemed like the barrier was impenetrable. So one thing that is consistent with this test is that they both seem to perform exactly the same way. So it could just be the shoe, who knows? But I would say that these things perform relatively the same. All right, so to wrap this up, which one is better? The Kiwi All Protector or the Force Field, which I call Force Shield <laughs> a few times throughout the video? Um, it depends. This is six ounces. This is 7.7. .7. They made the can bigger just to give you the illusion that you're actually getting more for your money, uh, and you're really not. Obviously, it is more in here, but one thing that I noticed with it, too, is that this sprays out thicker like this sprays out in more of a mist which means uh you don't have to use as much product so this actually you're actually getting more in this than this because you don't have to use as much um as far as water protectant i mean the video was a little bit of a fail because i tried to use gray shoes so we could see the you know see it turning uh colors once it gets wet but it could have been the way I was pouring it. It was just making the suede move and, you know, it really wasn't wet. But bottom line is they both perform well. They perform pretty much the same. The only thing I'll say is that this, if you guys saw the first video when I sprayed this on my Yeezys, it left a white residue on my gum soles and not the black ones, which is weird. But it left a white residue on the gum sole. And I don't really want to clean that up. While I tested it with this, I didn't show that on video, but I actually tested it with these and I sprayed them here. And first of all, you see, and I sprayed half of the toe box and the toe box is the same. So half of the, this half is Kiwi and this half is force field. It didn't change color, but I concentrated heavily on the, the, uh, the sole and it didn't leave any residue whatsoever. So in the future, when I have to spray uh, my uh, Yeezy boots or anything that has a uh, gum sole, I'll use the force field. Other than that, I'll use the Kiwi um, just because of price difference. You know, it's a $5 difference. This is $15 and this is 10, well, 11. And I, don't know, I really can't call it. If this was legit $12.99, like it says on the can, right here if that'll focus 12.99 if it was legit 12.99 then hands down i'm force field all day but because it's 15 you know depending on your application you might be better off with the kiwi so bottom line you can't go wrong with either one you know it's just up to you uh if you have gum soles just know that if you use a kiwi it's gonna leave a residue force field will not do that uh, but I haven't tested the force field on black shoes, and I'm not going to because if it leaves a white residue, I'm in trouble. I think they both will legitimately hold up for a year, like they said. Uh, well, like this one said, this one don't say anything. It just act like it lasts forever. So that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful. You know, I'm just trying to help you guys save some money, get the best bang for your buck. Uh, but in this case, I don't know. It's kind of a uh, kind of deadlock. So anyway, hopefully this was helpful. See you guys next time.